Hi, welcome to a Middleware Friday, episode 62, April 20th, 2018. Retrieving secrets from Azure Key Vault. So in this episode, I'd like to talk about Azure Key Vault, a managed capability in Azure or a managed service for managing your secrets and keys. There's also some community content around Azure Key Vault, some blogs I like to, uh, to point out to you. So Azure Key Vault, hosted in Azure to um, basically manage your keys or secrets, or there's even hardware security module, ASM uh, capability to create keys or certificate type of capability in Azure. So it kind of powers most of the encryption and web services uh, provided by Azure. And developers can use this capability for their own applications um, running in Azure, whether it be in an app service or for instance, a function. And I'll show the letter later in a demo. So there are kind of two storage types for um, the key vault. So it's either keys, so that can be like a, a security uh, compatible material, uh, which you can use, you know, you can use those keys for and or decode your data. So encryption or decryption of data. You could even use it to sign or verify your data. So some of the similar capabilities you could have found in uh, BizTalk in the pipeline, so using that kind of capability similar. Um, but then of course you need uh, a created certificate key, but you can have those um, in Key Vault. So those are kind of the keys. So if you're familiar with uh, encryption, decryption, or signing from an integration perspective, this this mount, this uh, capability will be suitable for you as well if you want to have it in a cloud solution. And on the other hand, you have secrets. So you can centrally manage some of your secrets or configuration uh, details, let's say configuration uh, endpoints of your service bus or for your um, storage. So you can have those endpoints uh, as secrets in your key vault. And you know both support um, time window access, basically. So the key vault's easily created. So in the marketplace, you can say, okay, hey, uh, key in key vault, and then you'll find the service and then you, um, you're able to provision it and you provided a name, a subscription, a resource group, and location, and you can do the pricing tier. So that's displayed here. And um, it's not that costly. It's about three uh, euro cents per month if you have the standard. And if you want to have the ASM backed keys, um, it's uh, around a euro a month. So it's pretty low price. So the way this works, if you work with Key Vault, is that you know the administrator will create a service principle in the Azure Active Directory, and within the vault set some access uh, control policies. That's kind of what on the administrative side you can do. And then from an application perspective, uh, you can use that service principle to authenticate against Azure, and then you get a token back. And with this token, you ultimately can access your Key Vault. So step A would be, um, well, once besides provisioning the Key Vault. Um, then create service principles, then set for each uh, of the service principle, the access control, like what kind of permission you get around keys and secrets. Then from an application perspective, you would authenticate, get a token, and then you could access the key vault. So those are basically the steps for, for authentication. So the service principle can be added um, once you have created the service or during the provisioning of the service. So you could select the service principle Assign, as you can see here, um, the capabilities, what can you do? And uh, there's like, okay, can I get, can I set, can I do what kind of stuff? And then you, depending on if you want to have keys or cryptographic operations or some privileged key operations, you can set them all during the configuration of the access policy for your service principle. And once sets it, um, it's, you will see it then, you know, the access policy there is. So by default, so you see here my name because I'm the, the person that kind of provisioned this, uh, this key vault and I added a, a service principle to it. So authentication can be user-based or, or off. Um, you either need to see that, set that up for one or the other um, with regards to the access lists um, in, in key vault. And you have to define some like the, the methods you see here, like get the key vault, access token, callback. That's kind of what you find in um, once you, let's say, import the NuGet package in your application, you can um, see what type of uh, objects there are and how you can approach them. You need to define those methods, as you can see here. So you can either um, provide uh, principal authentication 
as you can see here in the code, or you can have source principle authentication. So those are kind of the, uh, the types of authentication you can do uh, towards Key Vault from a code perspective. So furthermore, with code, uh, if you use code, you could uh, set secrets, you could create secrets, you get the keys. So depending, of course, on the access policy tied to uh, the account you are using. So keep that in mind. So in the demo here, um, I'm going to show you how you could get a secret from the Azure Key Vault from a function. We're here um, in my function app. So I've created a, um, a function called get um, key vault secret. And one of the some of the steps you need to do to make the uh, your function able to call key vault to get a secret, there's a few things you need to do. So one of the things you need to do is within the um, now let's go back in the network setting, create manage service identity. So you have to set this or a uh, service principle will be registered in the Azure Active Directory. You can check this by clicking on console. It will connect and then you type in set. Then you see all the settings of your uh, function app, basically under the hood, it's kind of an, an app service. And then you go to your managed service instance. So you can see the endpoint here and the secret. So here, this is the way you can validate that the managed service um, Identity has been set, so the M is high. So it's one of the things you can check it. Then let's go to the function itself. So it's been set. What you need to do in your function, this is an HTTP triggered function, is that you have to create this project JSON and import or get some of the NuGet packages or dependencies right here. So it's key vault, it's app authentication and client runtime. So these are kind of the same um, assemblies you'll need or NuGet packages if you would have done it through code. Let's say you create a, an app service uh, on-prem first before you deploy it out, or let's say you create an API app, then you need to have those kind of um, NuGet packages. What I've imported here, so let's go back to that function. So here you can see the code itself, some of the code you is required to get access and you know get that secret so the secret here is that i want to get the secret called my secret key vault secret so i could run this and it will get that from the middleware friday vault azure net and the key actually is middleware friday so let's move over to a key vault so this is the key vault i created let's go to the access policies first. So here you can see that I've created Middleware Friday. Middleware Friday is kind of the um, service principle created by the managed service identity. So it's kind of has the same name as my function app, which is Middleware Friday. And here I can set the permissions. So I've only set um, secret management operation get. So that's about the only policy I set for this um, service principle that's been created. If you move over to secrets, I see the name is my key vault secret. And then I go in there and I've created one, um, at least the value for it. So the value here, yes, so you can see is middle of Friday. I also set an activation expiration date. So that's kind of the granularity you have with your keys by the management. You say, okay, once it's created, it has a time to live um, until a certain date you can set. So. Going back to the function. The other thing you need to do is, and that's why I had clicked application settings before, is set the key vault URI. So it's the, the standard DNS is vault Azure Net, but then the name of your key vault is in there as well. This, this is a way you could um, access secrets through a function, depending if you need them. If you have multiple functions and you need to have a central place where you need some of the maybe other settings you require or secrets. Okay, so I've shown you a little bit like the administrator in this case would um, set the managed service identity or your developer could do that, uh, this and then it will 
create that service principle for you in the Active Directory. The next step would be, um, you know, have that key vault um, set and ready and set some of the access policies and what the service principle could do with regards to accessing the key vault. Then from the function perspective, uh, the uh, service principle or the managed service identity has been set on that function. So for this, it authenticates under the hood with Azure Active Directory gets a token. And this token is, is, is necessary to eventually get that, uh, get access to the key vault and get that secret. So that's kind of what you saw in this demo. So there's some community content. So um, one of my fellow MVPs, Matthias Lochtenberg, has created a, um, a nice blog around it. There's some other blogs uh, by Jeff Holland. Uh, the integration team, a company in uh, Belgium, created a nice blog post around it. So what Matthias has created is something around uh, similar as I demoed, uh, how to centralize your secrets in Azure Key Vault. So he explains it, what you could use uh, Key Vault for in a scenario with app service or function as well, or in ARM deployment as such. So the interesting blog post and reads um, something that definitely was valuable for me as well um, with regards to key vaults and secrets. So it's a really interesting blog post you could read. Okay, so you can uh, get it, you can get access to your key vault from um, either a function or an app service, but it's also, and this is an interesting tip as well, you could create, for instance, a custom connector and then set the resource to um, the URL of your key vault. So that's another way you could do it. So with a custom connector, you can also through a logic app get access to your key vault. So if you got any feedback around our Middleware Friday shows, please uh, keep them coming uh, either for Twitter or you know for the email. And um, the other thing I like to point out that there will be an integrator, of course, you've been uh, made aware of it through a different communication channels, also through Middleware Friday. So we've pointed it out. We're now at the stage, if you watch this video, that the early bird tickets are, that period is over. So now we're more at the regular period between uh, the 1st of April and the 30th. So if you watch this episode, there's still about 10 days to, to get the regular tickets. So tickets are going really uh, well. There's uh, so a lot of demand, or well, demand. There's a lot of people that register and sign up. So yeah, if you still want to attend, please, uh, please do. Uh, the price is still fair. So it's currently uh, the regular pricing, and after the 30th of April it will be the premium. So it will be another additional 100 pounds. So thanks for watching. Um, I like to thank Minora um, District 360 for being a great host, and of course everyone who's watching uh, the videos me and Kent are presenting. And um, um, hope you like those. And uh, next week, Kent will continue uh, uh, with his episode around flow. And you'll see me in two weeks. So I'll leave you with the music credits.